Hello and welcome to Art Talk. My name is Peggy Lyle and I'm the director for the Downtown Fort Collins Creative District. And in conjunction with Downtown Fort Collins, we're excited to offer uh, a nice interview with some of our local artists and some people who are really doing cool things in our art scene. Um, I'm so excited to be joined today with, uh, I get to chat with Todd Simmons from Wolverine Press and Public House, otherwise known as Wolverine Farm. Uh, welcome Todd, how are you? I'm great, Peggy. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Happy February. It's the month of, of love and we're getting closer to spring. I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm excited to get in the garden. Well, first thing I want to do before we dive into all the cool things that you're doing and all the neat, innovative uh, ways that you're engaging people in the outdoors, um, I wanted to actually get a little history of Wolverine Farm. Tell me, tell me about the name, tell me about where it came from and where you're located. Yeah, so uh, I moved to Fort Collins in 2002 and was toying with the idea of starting a publishing company. Uh, I just moved from Idaho and um, I was living on a farm outside of town and I started calling it the Wolverine Farm just uh, for fun, no real thought put behind it. And yeah, when I was searching around uh, for a name for this publishing company I wanted to start, uh, Wolverine Farm stuck. Uh, and we've been publishing literature ever since. That's pretty awesome. Um, and now you're located kind of right uh, in the most historic part of downtown Fort Collins, uh, just about a block off of the river. Is that correct? Yeah, we're in what they call the River District. Uh, we're just off the corner of Willow and Linden Street. Uh, where the fort was back in the uh, 1800s. And oh, wow. yeah, yeah, I always thought it was pretty interesting that the, the first part of town that was settled uh, by white people was like some, one of the last parts of town to be developed. And yeah, I have a deep love for the Poudre River and was excited to uh, uh, branch out with Wolverine Farm and open up the public house. Uh, we opened up back in November of 2015. Wow, congratulations. That's amazing. I can't believe it's been, so it's been five years. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, well, time I, flies I'm by. No doubt about that. Well, yeah. I know you have some really cool uh, public art that's actually outside of your uh, building and kind of all along that part of uh, Willow Street that's kind of telling the history of Fort Collins. Yeah, yeah. They finished up the, the public works project last year whether they redid Willow Street completely and put in the, put in the art. And yeah, they, they did a really nice job of tying it all together. Well, and in general, I know uh, because obviously you have a passion for literature and writing and you guys have also worked on uh, poet laureates for Fort Collins and hosted, uh, you know, been a location for the book festival. Tell me a little bit more about the literature side of what you guys do at Wolverine Farm. Well, yeah, I mean, we started out as a publishing company. Um, and we really uh, started to branch out into culture and community events when we opened up our uh, bookstore in the Bean Cycle back in 2005. Um, and we never really had any intention of becoming a, a cultural machine, but um, you know, I think by with a publishing company having a physical space and having a, a you know a chance to interact daily with the community, um, we started to meet a lot of like-minded people that wanted to do um, things that could engage their fellow citizens and we were we were pretty uh, amenable to uh, any and all groups coming through the space and um, you know we worked on everything from uh, food security issues to yeah the poet laureate program to uh, films to music um, to barn yeah, dances really, I, barn I do dances. barn dances and some good hoedowns you've had some good times over there yeah, yeah, a lot of dancing and celebrating uh, the arts, basically. Well, and so I want to kind of transition quickly into some things that you did this winter. I know we're all a little challenged with being indoors and capacities. You guys did a really cool thing in your courtyard. Can you tell everyone a little bit about the market that you developed? Yeah, I mean, we've always done holiday markets, um, but in the past, they've always been indoors, you know, usually one or two days only. Um, with uh, COVID and the, the need to keep people safe, we decided to push all that outside. And I had some friends who had visited Zurich uh, during the, the holiday season, and they were really taken with the uh, outdoor holiday markets. They have a long history of, of those. And uh, so, yeah, we tried to recreate that feel, um, and we called it Little Zurich, 
we built uh, some uh, shacks for artisans to sell their wares out of. Um, we had a local fabricator build a fire pit. We put a bunch of twinkle lights up. Uh, we did candle dipping, wreath making, sort of holiday inspired crafts. And yeah, really tried to create a warm, inviting space for people to get outside. Uh, and celebrate the holiday season. I know, I know. I thought it was uh, such a warm and welcoming thing to have happen during a time when we feel <clears throat> a little disconnected. And I personally want to thank you because I had some friends that got me lots of fabulous little gifts there from local makers. I got a really cool cactus ornament and some neat uh, sort of sparkly, sunshiny kind of earrings, things that just brought a lot of joy to me. And, and it was fun that they were able to shop local and do all of that right there at your place. So thanks for doing that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it really kept our spirits up around here. And, um, you know, financially, it was kind of the only thing that saw us through the winter had we not done that, I don't think, uh, yeah, there was really not a reason for us to be open with, with limited mm -hmm. capacity restrictions inside. And so, um, yeah, it was a uh, necessity for sure. Well, these, these times, uh, you know, kind of both require, but also inspire us to be creative. And uh, I really appreciate how much you guys work uh, hard to keep everyone engaged and excited and uh, still a part of supporting kind of the community you've created. Um, so I want to talk about I want to talk about some of the cool things that you're doing right now. Now you guys have an art show upstairs, is that right? That whole space people can usually they can rent it out for parties, but you have some art shows up there. Yeah, um, back in the fall we came up with an idea for uh, um, an eight by eight by eight series. So it's uh, Moss and Lumber, which is uh, a neighbor here in the River District. They donated eight sheets of plywood, you know, four feet by eight feet. And then we reached out to the local artist community uh, and had people um, send us their ideas for what they would create on a sheet of plywood within a certain time frame, eight days. Uh, so cool. Yeah, we were really overwhelmed with the, with the in, uh, interest. Um, we had to narrow it down to uh, eight different artists. And yeah, we gave them eight days to do something creative on their sheet of plywood. And then uh, they've been hanging in our event hall ever since. That's awesome. And can people come in and see those? Can they purchase them? Can they, yeah, are you going to have more have shows? Uh, we've sold one at this point. I'll walk you up there real quick. Um, we're limited to 25% uh, capacity. So right now it's 15 people upstairs at a time. Uh, but yeah, people can come view them at any time. That's nice. You could have a fun like family party up there. You could uh, just have a nice date night and that could kind of kick it off. I feel like your campus is big enough that people could uh do all kinds of fun things for a date night oh look at these yeah they're all really different um who so are what? some of the artists that you have there uh, let's see here that one's by meg shield oh wonderful this one is kelly clear that's fun well it also gives artists that potentially don't have a gallery space an opportunity to share some of their artwork yeah, absolutely. They really, oh. yeah, they all did a great job. Whoa, really there we are. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a little bit of a of a um, merry-go-round of artwork. Thank you. That was beautiful up there. <laughs> so yeah, those are right. be up, um, for another few weeks. We are working on a new idea that's it's pretty fun. Um, we got, uh, we got a nice. Um, corridor around folks coming in a nice corridor around the public house building and uh, we've been playing with this idea of a circumambulation walking art tour oh so, that that's kind of is that sort of inspired by your drive-through art uh, exhibit that you did uh, earlier yeah, in the 2020 the summer, we did a drive-through art show out on a farm uh, east of town same idea we're going to do some installations in this corridor oh, that's so cool. and music and theater are going to be a part of it and then uh yeah beginning march 5th on that first friday uh, will be the kickoff of we're calling it uh wolverine return sort of like saturn return astrological and, oh i like it yeah so trying to again create a safe way for people to come out experience art and culture and uh yeah be a part of something that 
um, hopefully will be inspirational and provide a lot mm -hmm. of hope. Well, and I, I will say too, you know, working with artists all the time, it's also a way for them to feel creative and have opportunities to work towards a project, you know, without performances and um, sometimes without a lot of the normal things that they kind of work towards in place. It's really great to have just something to kind of feel motivated to get to the, you know, to the next, next month. And so I really appreciate that you're, you're doing that and challenging all of us to keep enjoying art. Yeah. Well, so I'm really excited about this next piece and I, I want to transition quickly because I feel like everyone might be planning their date nights, a whole month worth of romance, hopefully. I'm kind of a romantic and I know that you have these really cool shacks. Yeah, so the shacks that we had created for the Little Zurich holiday market uh, after the market was over in December, we converted them to date night shacks and so you, you can reserve them um, and have a, a date with a special friend. Um, we have fondue, charcuterie, mold wine, and each of the shacks are themed. So there's the writer shack, the craft shack, the astro shack, and the love shack. Oh my God, I love them so much. So that's super fun. So people just kind of go in there and then they can take part in whatever the theme is for that shack. And they can also order in some food and some, uh, some beverages and stuff from you guys because you have your full uh, barista bar and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the fondue has been a real hit. Uh, a lot of parents have been bringing their young children out for a little uh, date night. And yeah, like in the craft shack, you, we have collage materials, crafting materials, a button machine, so you can make stuff while you're hanging out with that special someone. Um, a lot of writers actually have been renting the writer's shack in the mornings uh, to find a nice, quiet, secluded place to, to write that next great work. Great, that next great novel. And Todd, I was wondering if you might be able to take all of our viewers on a quick little tour of the shacks that you have out in your courtyard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Oh my gosh, that's so, you guys are so inventive and those are so interesting and, and no one else is really doing that. I think that's, that's great how you're able to kind of connect them to an activity so they feel like they get to leave the house and do something really fun. Um, the other thing we're doing is uh, for First Friday, uh, you know, obviously that's when people sort of start their new offerings for the month, but we're excited that people uh, in downtown are uh, actually able to participate in art related things all month long. And so yeah. you guys are offering this all month long, is that correct? Are you offering it throughout the whole spring? Yeah, we'll be offering it probably until July. And then uh, probably in July, we'll ch change it up again and do something different. Oh, great. So I can potentially go to each one of the shacks. Yeah, we've had some people that are actually doing that. They're, they're trying to use them all and multiple times. So they've really been, yeah, really been a success. Well, I like the idea of going to the love shack and uh, spinning the bottle. I think that sounds, that sounds pretty fun, especially yeah. if it's with someone that, uh, you know, obviously I am already kind of my, someone in my household. Let's yeah, just right. say that. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Valentine's Day is filling up. So um, go to the website soon. So they, you, so everyone can reserve it in advance. Yeah, just go to wolverinefarm.org and yeah, you can reserve your specific time. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you're doing so many amazing things. Thank you for supporting artists and really for supporting writers. We have so many writers in town. Uh, I know you guys are having a poetry reading sometimes through your Instagram. You're doing some really cool things to make sure people don't forget 
all the um, kind of creatives in our town and, and connecting people to that art. It really is giving us all hope and giving us a lot of joy. Yeah, we're pretty excited. Our um, the most recent book that we published, uh, Enjoying the Work by George Wallace, a longtime resident and retired CSU professor. Yeah, he was selected um, to be a featured performer virtually at the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering in Elko, wow. Nevada, which is like a pretty cool event because it brings in environmentalists and ranchers and cowpokes and you know all this Western culture. Um, you know, it's this really big gathering in Elko, Nevada every year. They're not doing it in person, but yeah, George was picked to be a featured performer and we're pretty excited about that honor. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for always being a champion for our poetry uh, folks and, and for giving us really cool things to go do on a date night. Um, if anyone is interested in finding out more about what's going on all over downtown for Art Walk um, throughout the month, they can go to downtownfortcollins.com. And on behalf of the Downtown Creative District and Downtown Fort Collins, Todd, thank you so much. This has been really fun to visit with you. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Yeah, I appreciate you guys doing what you do. For sure. And I'll see you at one of the shacks. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>